And there's Big Mickey, evidently relocated from the uh, steelworks to from the steelworks to um, uh, the naval pool. Chronologically, I think this is, this episode was uh, it's obviously set after High Tide, but I think it came first in the air dates, which means that this is also the first episode in which we meet Blue Nose, Redfin, Big Mickey, and here we have. Blue Nose demonstrating how he is ridiculous about the orders. And he seems to be trying to blame someone else for this. Stay where we are and do what, Blue Nose? What are you actually planning? Do you have a plan? Or are you basically some twit who got packed off to a backwater by the Navy? Are you basically in exile, sent off to the boonies? Uh, I would not be surprised. He is so incompetent. So officious, we almost think the Navy want nothing to do with this guy, and possibly they've packed him off somewhere where he normally can't do any damage, but this time he is. How does your engine cut out on a steam engine? Uh, Tencent showing his bravery, and Zoran showing unconventional um, concern for Tencent's. It's uh, an unusual moment for Zoran, along with the uh, moment earlier where he expressed, uh, when he sided with OJ, you know, the paddler's right. He wants to continue loading fuel in this inferno. The guy is a twit. Now, this is an episode that gets a lot of character development for Zoran. He gets to show a lot of different sides of himself. Take me back into the firestorm at once. The pyrotechnics are going nuts now, and the guys are just having so much fun. And now we get Big Mickey's death scene. Oh, no. Big Mickey's is going up. He's going to fall over on the tugs in this configuration, but he's going to swing clear and uh, swing clear. Despite the fact he's going to die, he's ensuring he doesn't help hurt anyone else. Now, of course, in some versions, in one cut of this, it said that Big Mickey didn't die, was salvaged, and basically fell into shallow water, but there's no payoff here. And the general tone, you know, it took real skill to make that, oh, he's done it, suggests he's basically sacrificed himself to save everyone else. So this is death in a children's show, in a sense, or implied death. They almost sound like they're mourning him here. Now then, OJ has made the point that, uh, very bad seamanship. Whoever was responsible for loading Krakatoa basically took two different types of two different types of uh, explosive materials, and those are the ones the same, same ship: Exp munitions, basically shells, etc., high explosives, and fuel, which presumably means fuel oil or kerosene. And now we cut away to the Laurel and Hardy pair: Frank and. Uh, Eddie, Ollie, I can't remember the second one's name. Tom, top hat about to threaten the two uh, car flats with uh, a horrible fate. Now uh, these two uh, barges, which top hat is most often paired with, as you can see, uh, they carry railroad cars, and this is why top hat has its elevated wheelhouse. Tugs that worked uh, with car flats in the old days were designed with extra high wheelhouses so their crews could see over the top of any box cars that might have been loaded on either side of them. That's why Top Hat can bob his head up and down, and hence why he's classified as a railway tug. The spot. The nice little technical reference to the explosion spreading aft. There's a lot of dread and relish and the upcoming destruction of the ship, and it's incredible. Isn't there anything we can do? Like what, dummy? Anyway, you've done your bit, just sit back and watch. But he's spreading! Yes, and true to his uh, slightly opportunistic off. self. Right, uh, Zoran's going to sit back and watch the show now. Now, Puffer, first episode we're introducing him as well, it's quite a big episode. Other Zeds warning him off as well? It doesn't stand, they don't stand to, loot, uh, to gain anything by him being destroyed. Beautiful whistle, and he's pulling one of Bill and Ben's trucks, which is, of course, a uh, narrow gauge Linton and Barnstable model just running on the same gauge of tracks. I always thought there was something odd about those uh, wagons that Bill and Ben used, and which uh, Toby used in uh, Henry's Forest. 
and it turns out they're linked to the Barnstable trucks. In a standard gauge setting. Kits. Now then, ten cents is moment of glory. I'm taking the flaming, t the flaming uh, tanker away, the barge away. Save everyone. Vault stinker. Oh, it's um, episode. Everyone's in this. Ages ago. There's no, not west. I guess you can learn a little bit about big city geography from that little exchange, north and west and so on, but uh, I'm not going to try and, ex and get my head around it. How did they not damage the boats doing this? Warrior, hero of the hour, charges straight towards the danger, and he's going to really show his stars later on now. now it's interesting that Warrior, despite having an episode dedicated to him, Warrior, gets to show his finest moments in other episodes, such as this one and uh, Upriver. <laughs> this another episode has got nice atmospheric effects with the camera down low to the water. He's in shock. Post traumatic stress disorder. Maybe this is a good opportunity to talk about the uh, periscope lens system. You can see how the camera is really low to the water and you're left wondering how the camera isn't submerged in the water and getting damaged. Well the thing is it's not. This is the clear water periscope lens system that was used for Thomas, developed for Thomas and used here. The camera is much higher up and suspended from a, a track on the ceiling that can move in two axes. But attached to the camera is a periscope lens that basically bends the image through a set of mirrors and through a sort of long downward extending proboscis so you can get the camera right down to the bottom uh, to as close to the water as possible. Which means you can get lovely shots like that where Warrior goes right up to the camera. Zoran, stop being a vicious bastard. Uh, the periscope lens system also has a, an incredible range of adjustable focus, so you can get these good shots with models that give them a lot more depth. Anyone who's ever put a camera up to uh, a model, and I'm sure Simon with the British Railway series can appreciate this here, uh, you'll know how hard it can be to get the right kind of focus and not make your model look like a toy. And it's something which... This is something which has been done to perfection with Tugs. A little bit of an improv here as well, I think. That wasn't intentional, but they worked with it brilliantly, and it can believe a clang effect as it bounced off Warrior's hat. Must be made of metal. There we are. Warrior's finest hour. Taking care of his friends. Warrior's finest hour. And now Zoran's getting gang pressed. What me, mister? And of course Zeb's about to have his little moment of uh, showing what a real hero is. There you go. Yeah. Here's, hero here's heroism for you. Ten cents about to try and get himself blown up just to save everyone else's backsides. This is a good bait and switch. You don't really need to show the majority of the explosion, just that flare from over the horizon. It just tells you so much more. But it's a crisis situation and he wants to flee. He wants to help his friend, but he's got to stay and help the danger that's at hand rather than danger might be elsewhere. Alright, it's time for Krakatoa to go down. She's blown a hull out and now she's going to capsize. And I've got shivers because it's beautifully done. The music just... Burning like a funeral pyre, rolling over in the water. It's almost like the Normandy going down after her fire. The great, pass the great French passenger liner that was uh, requisitioned by the US Army, uh, well, held in, a, held in New York Harbor, converted to a troop ship, and then unfortunately sank after a fire, capsized in her dock. That final blast up the funnel. A lovely touch. Large ships seem to come off worse in the series. Uh, you have the destruction of. Uh, it looks like a bomb site. And Top Hat comes cruising in, last of all. This guy seems to pair off with uh, High Tide, with Top Hat getting, uh, getting the worst of uh, things in terms of other people's opinions. But no, I'm. Uh, like that blast up the funnel as she goes down. It's a lovely touch. And the implication of death here. But I know that whistle. I know that whistle. 
<laughs> so do I, sunshine. Looks fantastic. Are you bruised. Everyone does actually. They're all covered in smuts. He must have uh, had a hole punctured in his hole, but hopefully his pumps are keeping him afloat. There's Grampus doing his thing. But this is the, the, the switcher and turned away a twitch. You really wonder how Blue Nose managed to keep his job if he, uh, after causing such a kerfuffle. Orders may be orders, but they don't supersede. A nice little bit of narration by Captain Star now, and it's a lovely shot to go away on. Just oh, uh, just Blue Nose twitching around, and uh, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but Blue uh, Blue Nose seems to have the same hull design as uh, Boomer. Boomer's uncle, uh, the Boomer, Sea Rogue's hero's uncle, the green eyed things, the white fleet. Again, it's the generic medium sized tug model. None of the tugs in the actual fleet have that size. You basically have your four size of tugboat switcher, the intermediate size, which I guess could be a river tug, um, the harbour tug, and then the ocean going tug. And obviously, there's only one of those, and that's Hercules. The periscope lens system. Well, guys, I'll see you for the next episode. I hope you've enjoyed these commentaries and I hope I've not rambled on for too long. Thanks again.